we want to ask you a question. What, what are, are your motives, motives for doing good? The power of sin is so deeply rooted within all of us as human beings that it is impossible for us not to sin. Hello everyone, I'm Patrick. And I'm Lynetta. And together we are co-founders of Vertical, Vertical Connections, Connections Inc. Inc. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. To our subscribers, we truly appreciate you. Continue to yes. share this content with others and be sure to click the like button. And to our new viewers and subscribers, thank you. Yes, we want you to be participating in this Bible study on Sundays as we do our reflection because it's so important to have you sharing some of your questions and then putting them down in the comment section or you might have some examples that we're going to be talking about later and we just want to hear all about yours as well and then we can comment next week as we read through those but for today mm -hmm. <laughs> we are so sinful by nature that it is impossible for us not to sin that brings me to Romans 3.10, <laughs> where it says, There is none righteous. There is none righteous. No, not one. Wow. So can we truly be good? Hmm. Does it mean we are good if we are, let's see, at the outlet mall, and we see a wallet, and we go turn it in? Does it mean we are good if we hold a door and help someone in or out of a building? Does it mean we are good if we are continually reminding people that to pay it forward? Oh, that <laughs> reminds me of, or brings us to, an example that just happened to us not too long ago, where we had an individual come up to our door, ring the bell, and... So we go, we probably didn't answer it right away, but we were a little slow getting to the door. And as we got there, we see this person running away from the house. So first of all, our first inclination is something negative. My wife opens the door and you can see the person stop. And she comes running back. My wife, of course, asks, uh, May I help you? And she says, I just want to let you know that your garage is still open. And I said, oh my goodness, thank you very much. I so appreciate you letting us know that. Yes. Have a good evening. And it was late, and so it was really awesome that this person stopped what she was doing. She was with two other individuals and came up and was brave. Thought it was important that we make sure to check that, which it was. Mm -hmm. But it was just amazing to have that person do that. Now, does that mean that she's a good person? Or did she just do a good thing? Reminds me of that. Why would she even have to do that? Obviously, there is sin in this world, and we have to be very observant and noticed and aware of it and help each other through this. So when we talk about being good, what's your definition of good? Hmm. Possessing uh, desirable qualities, okay. beneficial or agreeable to, being right. positive. So if you would, this is one of those times we'd like for you to participate. Go ahead and put your definition of what good is. Or if you've had one of those situations or some that experience of somebody doing good for you, share that with us. We'd love to hear about it. Or even if you did good to someone else. Yes. In theology, the inability to not sin is mm -hmm. called the moral inability of human beings. Wow. This doesn't mean we can't do anything good that outwardly conforms to or reflects to the law of God. So those being our actions, right? Yes. Okay. Well, that reminds me or brings me to the analogy about the gentleman who always liked to drive his automobile 55 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. So this gentleman loved to drive or had a desire to drive his vehicle at 55 miles per hour because he was comfortable doing it. He knew that it worked optimally well 
and that he just felt safe and secure driving at that speed. So one day the gentleman goes out on the road and he's traveling down the highway and he reads the speed limit sign that says 55 miles per hour. And he keeps going along feeling really good about what he's doing and all of a sudden the car goes by doing about 58. Another one comes by going about 60. Another one goes by about 62 or 3 miles an hour. As he's going along on this road and people are passing him, an officer sees this taking place. So he pulls up behind the gentleman that's going 55 miles per hour and has him pull to the side of the road, gets out of his car and comes up. As the gentleman rolls down the window, he says, good afternoon, sir. I want to give you this citation. It's not a ticket, but I just want to reward you for doing what is right by obeying the law. It feels so good. It's so refreshing that somebody out here is doing what they're supposed to. So I'm going to give you this citation. The gentleman looked up at him and he said, well, thank you, sir. And they both went on their merry way. Now, where I come from, out in the rural America, there are a lot of little small towns as you go along on these highways. So the gentleman just happened to be coming up to a town, and in that town there's a school. So he enters the town and he sees a school zone speed limit, 15 miles. And our gentleman, of course, what does he do? He continues to drive 55 miles an hour right through that school zone. It was a Saturday, so it was safer. But anyway, the gentleman was driving 55 miles an hour because he had no desire of obeying the law. He had no desire to conform of doing what was expected everyone to do by law. It was just what he wanted to do. Theologians call this a civic virtue. Sometimes for our own best interest, we find ourselves obeying the word of God. For our own best interest. We may not steal because in the environment we live in, we feel as if stealing doesn't pay. We may also do a noble gesture. One that is going to gain applause from the multitude, one that's going to be received well by all the others that are watching us because maybe we're looking for that applause or that acknowledgement that we're doing something good because we're running for office or we have some other motivation. Oh, that reminds me of Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord, not for man. My wife has been recently sharing with me some different podcasts that she listens to. And one that I really have been drawn to recently is that of R.C. Sproul's. Because it ties into what we're talking about with motives for doing good. Mm -hmm. And in it, it states that but the one motivation that we are lacking in a, in a fallen person is the motivation to obey the law out of a pristine love for the God of the law. And when you say fallen person, he's not talking about someone who has fallen down and can't get up. He's talking yes. about our broken nature. Yes. The nature that we have from the original sin. Not the first sin, but the, that sin which made this uh, our state of sinfulness begin. So this also brings me to the point in Matthew 22, 35 through 40. And I just wanted to read this portion out of the Bible. It states that, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second and is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law, and the prophets. Mm. 
Wow. Is it possible to obey the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind if you do not know him? No. So in order for us to do our deeds, not because we're trying to get his love, but because we understand that he first loved us, yeah. so it is our duty to obey and to show that and to share the gospel with others because he first loved us, we understand we need to love. Now, I want to, we want to leave you with um, Romans 12. Verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> As you go throughout this week, please keep in mind to be purposeful. Purposeful about what? Making sure that your deeds, your words, your thoughts are glorifying God from your heart, from your soul, from your mind, because you're digging into the scriptures and finding about his character and understanding how to mirror the Lord God Almighty. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, here we go with Romans 12, 1, 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, sisters, body of Christ, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Mm. We urge you to join us next time so that we can further dig into the Bible regarding the sinful nature that we have mm. and the need that we that we have for God. We must have a desire for God. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We appreciate all of you being here. If this has touched you in some way and you feel like you'd like to support this Bible study, please check that little heart with a dollar sign in it. Click on there and they'll guide you to how you can contribute and continue helping us. But we look forward to seeing you all next week and sharing some of those comments that you'll be putting in. So until next time, get connected to, to Go, Go Vertical. Vertical. Bye.